Hey guys, Travel Blogger Interview Series 2, Episode 4, I think we're up to now. Um, with me today is, yeah, Brenna Holman from thisbatteredsuitcase.com. You're a .com as well, aren't you? Everyone's a .com apart from yeah. me. I might have made a mistake with that one. Um, yeah, so thisbatteredsuitcase.com. Um, just for anyone that doesn't know who you are, do you want to give a bit of a quick intro into you and your blog? Sure. Um, so I'm Brenna. Um, I'm originally from Canada, and I started traveling in 2006 and I was pretty much on the road continuously until 2013 when I moved to London um, and I live in London now but still travel quite a bit and my blog I would say is definitely focuses on solo female travel but um, I try to have a lot of narrative posts and try and really focus on the stories that make up traveling so my posts tend to be wordy and long <laughs> <laughs> no so. bad thing it's no bad thing <laughs> no, oh, hopefully not. Uh, um i don't know if, i don't know if you told me this or someone else told me this um or whether it's just a vicious rumor that's going on but um when you started your blog you like you didn't realize how many people were reading it kind of thing it was only a few years later that so i don't know if someone pushed you in the direction to have a look at stats or whatever but you you just started like for the love of writing kind of thing or was it yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was completely naive about everything blogging until about uh, a year and a half ago, I'd say. <laughs> so you might be regretting choosing to interview me right now. No, no, no. Um, but uh, I started blogging in 2002, um, maybe 2003. So I started on LiveJournal. Mm -hmm. And I did it because it was, <clears throat> believe it or not, the cool thing to do in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where I went to uni. And so all my friends were doing it. It was kind of like MySpace. Okay, like yeah. just, um, we just wrote different things and posted pictures. And um, I mean, at that point, I was still getting the pictures developed, film and Classic. Then scanning them. Nice. Yeah, and putting them online. Um, and then from there, around 2000, uh, uh, I just I stayed on Live Journal for quite a while, and then somewhere around there, 2006, 2007, I switched to only writing about travel, and then in 2010, I made the switch to uh, first Blogspot, and now mm -hmm. I'm on WordPress. Um, and I really just I always just did it because I loved it, and I then started putting out my pictures from traveling and writing, and you know sometimes I'd get some comments. I wasn't on social media at all. I didn't have Twitter. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't have a Facebook page, not until somewhere in 2012. So I just was doing it because I loved it. And then, you know, then I got Twitter and Facebook and everything. And somebody said, oh, well, how many readers do you get a month? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> and I, yeah, I looked and actually I was quite surprised that I don't know where these people came from or how they were finding my blog. But then um, in so with social media and everything over the past few years, it's, yeah, it's grown. I mean, I'm happy with my numbers not the biggest blog out there but I'm I'm happy with my numbers and it's been really interesting uh to see that but to see that growth but at the end of the day um I know it sounds so cheesy and I'm sure everyone says like I don't really care about the the numbers to me I'd rather have you know a smaller group of really yeah. cool interested engaged readers than having tens of thousands of people who just go to my blog once or something so that's what I really focus on doing is building a community um and I love seeing the same people comment yeah that's cool. know, and, and things like that so at, at the end of the day it's always going to be about because I I love doing it and love writing and love putting pictures up so so with your right I, again I don't know if you told me this but you like when you're away do you actually keep like a diary Yes. Because we were like, who was I talking, again, it might have been you or someone else, but like, you can write incredible stories on yours, but seemingly like six, 12, 18 months after you've been somewhere. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm like, I've got, a, it's in my head, I've got to write it down now before I forget it. Is that because you've got like journal notes you then refer back to kind of thing? Yeah, I've always been that way. I've always actually preferred to kind of ruminate on, on what happened and think about it for a while, um, which is why on my blog you'll go and see. Actually, I'm putting up a post this week about the Trans-Siberian, and I went on the Trans-Siberian. I really want to in, do that. So. Yeah, in 2010. Okay. But I can still remember things, and I have, I mean, I have my whole shelf of journals since 2006, um, and they go back. I actually started keeping journals when I was four. So... Um, it's yeah it's been really cool I always am just writing now unfortunately I don't write as much as I used to okay. in journals because I write more online 
but I find, yeah, I always have, I mean, even just sitting here, like I have tons of little notebooks <laughs> and stuff, um, lying around. So with that, and I take a lot of pictures, yeah. um, I find I am able to remember it, but yeah, I, I prefer to wait a little while and let it all kind of sink in and sort of reflect back on what that trip meant. Okay. That's quite cool. So it's like almost as if what you remember is like the key elements and worth writing about or it's yeah maybe okay. and and i find it's it's really interesting because um i've been so i'm also doing a master's um in creative non-fiction writing okay. um so i'm writing a book at the moment and in my class only six of us and we often talk about memory mm -hmm. and what happens with your memory but i always like to look at it i think this is just an excuse for Oops, if I didn't tell the whole truth, don't blame me. <laughs> but I always try and look at it like, you know, what your memory does and what, what I remember from those times, those moments. Well, that is the truth. That yeah. is what, what yeah. I took out of it. So, um, yeah, well, we'll see when the book comes out. Maybe there'll be a few people who will disagree with what yeah. I have to say. But, yeah. So with, like, school, so you're working, like, in London now, mm -hmm. blogging and in school or university sorry or yeah. like how <laughs> how does this work how are you able to well, um, <laughs> um I'm, coffee I'm really and lucky. red bull like... <laughs> yeah, i have coffee here yeah. <laughs> um i'm really lucky um i work for a big travel company that i'd rather not say the name of um but i work for a big travel company writing and and um working as a community manager for them and then I also do a ton of freelance articles for other travel companies um, and websites. And then my blog is all travel re related. And then my book that I'm writing is travel related. So I find that it all sort of goes yeah, together. Okay. And um, I am always stressed, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, I love it all. And, and yeah, I find it just kind of works. My days are really all over the place. I wish I was more organized so I could say, okay, these few hours I'm doing this, these few hours I'm doing this, but it tends to just be wherever my creativity is. If it works, it works, or. though. Yeah, yeah. so I'm you enjoying know. it, and it is all related, so it kind of makes sense in my mind, at least. Okay, so obviously in between, like, the work and the school and whatever, you still obviously have time to travel and stuff. Um, what, have you got anything coming up? Like, 2015 um, was? Yeah, well, 2014 was crazy. I thought when I started that year, I said, oh, I'm not going to travel much. And then I went to like 15 countries. Like, I, was away. <laughs> I was away every month. Redefining <laughs> not traveling much right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, because for me, if it's not a really long trip, yeah. I'm not traveling much. Um, but this year, no, I'm staying in London <laughs> for a while. I promise I'll just in that. At least a week. But, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm really trying to just focus on loving London. Okay. I love living here and just getting a lot of work done because the book is due this summer. Um, but then I know for sure I'm going to Spain uh, for TBEX, the travel blogging okay, yep. conference. Um, and I'm going to do a bunch of travel around the UK. And then hopefully this summer I'm going to go to Tanzania. Nice. And Kenya. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then, you know, a lot of other dreams that who knows if they'll happen but yeah. um and possibly thailand in, in the autumn but um yeah i tend to i'm i tend to just sort of see what happens and then okay. often my book a trip you know last year i thought i really want to go to the beach and three days later i was in spain so i tend to do on it that a whim way. nice okay yeah yeah i'm quite fortunate because i can work as long as i have a laptop sure. and internet connection i can work which is nice cool so going back to last year, you went to Ireland, a place yeah. I know fairly well. And um, like you went down to, I suppose, not a typical Irish sort of tourist area, I guess. Like I've been there because I've got friends and, well, the girlfriend's friends and family down there. But like County Limerick hasn't been written about too much, I don't think. It's usually Dublin, Belfast, yeah, maybe Derry Fort, or Donegal, yeah. Cork. Yeah. Um, but you went to Limerick and wrote something and in short it, blew up the internet kind of thing how, how was that <laughs> it, it blew up like not not, yeah. not saying nobody um, could yeah, use was, it but it um. was really interesting because i went with um the expedia explorers mm -hmm. campaign which is for expedia ireland 
And so they sent me a list of places. They said, what are your available dates? I wrote back and they said, okay, here are five different places that you could go to. Where would you like to go? And I just said, oh, Limerick. Yeah, sure. I'd like to go to Limerick. And I've been to Ireland a few times, um, but I've been just outside of Limerick. I actually cycled through Ireland many years ago. As you do. Holiday, <laughs> yeah. This is actually really fun. Um, but uh, so I just thought, yeah, yeah, I'll go to Limerick. I don't know anything about it. And I think that maybe that was, I think sometimes it's better not to know much mm. about a place where you're going. I mean, obviously you want to know the basics, but... I think because I went in, I only found out later that Limerick doesn't have the best reputation. But through my eyes, through these new eyes, let's say, I didn't see that at all. No. It was a lovely city. It is a lovely city. Um, it was cold. It was November. But I can only imagine in the summer how great it is. And, yeah, I was only there for a weekend. But there was so much to do. I met amazing people. Went down to the pub on my own and, you know, met so many cool people. Yeah amazing food just I had a great time and so when I got back to London um I had to write or I wanted to write a post on my own blog about it and so I just wrote why I love Limerick and why you should too because I thought why aren't more people going Mm. here it's you know it's I mean it was cheaper for me like the, the flights were cheaper than like actually half the price than me going up to Manchester last weekend. Yeah. So like mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's really cheap to get there. And um, so I wrote this post and then I think maybe I tweeted the tourism board or something. And and then they tweeted it and all of a sudden it was getting all these retweets and it the article ended up being shared, you know, like, or like 8,000 likes or something on Facebook. And I don't know how many shares on Twitter. And then, the traffic that was my my best week of traffic yeah. and uh it's one of those things where you look at your traffic mm. and it's it goes like this and then all of a sudden like yeah. that. <laughs> that looked great <laughs> for the rest i'm gonna always have to compare to this spike but it was like yeah tens of thousands of hits in a week um and people you know it really especially the people of Limerick were really saying thank you because yeah you mm-hmm. know our city has this reputation but um the, the reputation is outdated. It's not yeah, the same city. So. so, and I understand that coming from, um, from Winnipeg in Canada and Winnipeg has a reputation, but it's, I mean, it, it's an outdated, I think an outdated reputation and there, there is a lot to see. So, um, yeah, I was really happy with that. And I'm, I'm planning to go back to Limerick hopefully in, in the summer, um, just to go and see it again. And, um, a couple of people have said, come back and I'll yeah. show you around and, so yeah, no, it's just, it was funny because say like, so we go back or we go there, sorry to um, see girlfriends, friends, and family, and they were sort of messaging me going, "Oh, you do travel blogging? Like we've just had a blog written about us. Like you know, you should take a look at this." And then we were like, "Oh, they're like, do you know her?" I was like, "Yeah, I was, I was having a drink with her last week. Like we're yeah. quite good mates. It was really, really surreal." But um, I don't know. Maybe it's something about Ireland because I wrote something about um, the trip we did over there recently. We went on a mini road trip and that blew up on the internet. So obviously Irish people are quite the fan, or sort of southern, southwest, whatever. I was quite fans of Twitter and Facebook, but it's yeah, it's yeah. nice when it happens. Yeah, it's, and it's, I mean it's always so nice when it when you, for me, um, when you get that response, it shows mm. how much people really care and are really proud of their city. And yeah. because I've definitely written about places and it's gotten absolutely no traffic from from the it people happens. of yeah. the place. So. Um, it's always really nice to see that. So do you think you'll focus more on writing about people rather than like places as such now? Like, has it changed uh, the way you're going to write in the future, this happening? Well, I think I always sort of, I always prefer to write more about the people. Mm-hmm. When, when I look at my favourite posts on my blog, they're all stories about people. Okay. And that's just always been why I travel as well. Um, absolutely, I want to travel to beautiful parts of the world and yeah. see that and but for me, it's about, okay, where can I go to be in this busy market and chat to people or going to the pub and meeting people that way. So that's actually the book that I'm writing is an epistolary, which is a series of documents, usually letters. And so the book, each chapter is a letter written to somebody I've met oh, cool. um, in my travels. Yeah. Oh, awesome. so, and that's because cool. that, yeah, 
Sorry? No, you go. Sorry, you were still explaining. I jumped oh, in. no, no, no. Just that, um, yeah, just to go back, that it's always been the people I've met that have defined a place, not necessarily the place itself. I think, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you're in somewhere beautiful, but everywhere, everyone's not your cup of tea, it's obviously not going to... Exactly. Not going to be exactly. quite the same. I've, sort I've been of. in some amazing places, but just haven't met the right, you know, other travelers or locals. Um, and then I've been in some places where, you know, it's always funny to talk to another traveler and they say, oh, I went there. Ooh, I didn't like it. It's like, what? I had the greatest yeah. time. But then you think back, well, who was exactly. I with? Why did I have such a good time? So, like, you've been traveling for years and obviously you say sort of people are a big influence on how much you sort of enjoy a destination. Um I guess, like, do you still try and keep in contact with, like, people you've met and have you got, like, really old friendships dating back years who you see once in a blue moon, but yeah, because you got on so well that one time, it still feels like you're real buddies kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, all the time. I'd say about once a month, especially in London. I get together with someone I've met previously, um, years awesome. ago. Uh, so just last night, um, I went and met up with a guy, Harry, um, who he's from Limerick actually, and he shared <laughs> the article as well. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, and Harry and I met in 2009 in Hanoi, Vietnam, yeah. on my very first night in Vietnam, and we partied and had quite a wild night. Uh, it was really fun. <laughs> this is a PG <laughs> show, <pictures>. careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we just enjoyed a few, um, risky buckets, and then. Uh, <laughs> And then um, that was it. It was like, okay, cool. Like, really nice to meet you. Yeah. Bye. We had a you know, good, good party together. But we kept in touch on Facebook. And then he invited me to his birthday party last night. And I hadn't seen him since 2009. So I went and met up with him last night. It was great. We, you know, got along. We had a good chat. And I mean, that's always really cool. I, uh, last month, a girl um, named Anita, who lives in... Amsterdam. Um, I met her for my last two days in Brazil in 2012. Hadn't seen her, but she messaged me, hey, I'm coming to London. We got together. We had an amazing, like, super fun day together awesome. in London. So, yeah, I, I see a lot of people, and I really, I know a lot of people are like, ooh, social media, ooh, I hate being on Facebook. Yeah. No, I love it. It connects, it connects so many people, especially when you do travel, and for me, it connects me to my family, and um, yeah, I love keeping in touch. With, with people with like facebook and stuff i always thought because like i was speaking to ed rex about this last week i started blogging or like yeah it was blogging and like traveling before facebook found its way you know over to the uk or whatever or twitter or anything like that so that a blog or a diary online diary whatever you want to call it was my means of telling my family i was still alive in one piece kind of thing yeah um and i don't know if i'd have started a blog had facebook been around because it makes you know, contacting back home that much easier. Do you, do you think you would have started like your sort of, or kept up your travel blog if Facebook had come in earlier? I mean, you said it was for a love of writing, so you probably yeah, might have done. Yeah, but... I think I think for me, definitely, and um, I hope my, like, my dad doesn't read my blog anyway, so okay. for me, and he's not on Facebook, so for me, I have to email him or call him. They're really time. critical <laughs> spelling mistakes, parents, so it's good. To <laughs> well, my mom's a writer. Oh, so. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, I know my mom and my sister always read it, and uh, I hope my brother does. I don't know. Um, but it's, for me, again, I would have I would have always done it. Mm. Um, Facebook is good, but I've, I find I use Facebook more for personal messages. Yeah. Um, I do have a Facebook page, of course, with my blog, but um, it's kind of strange. On my social media, I feel I'm, I'm actually quite vanilla. Okay. I feel that I'm kind of just like, oh, here's this cool article or yeah. here's this. I find it's on my blog where I can really be myself and really say. That's your space, things. though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Whereas awesome. social media, I, I'm always aware of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, what what can go wrong on social media? <laughs> spiral out of control. <laughs> yeah, but then well, it can it spiral happens. in a good way as well, with, well, like with Limerick. So yeah, but did you see what happens? Did you, I don't know if you saw on my I put on my personal um, Facebook page that I saw Robert Pattinson. Oh, um, Twilight fella. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I saw him in London a okay. couple weeks ago. Watch if he posts, and I'm going to get even more hate from it. Um, 
but I saw him like oh, I saw him in London with his I don't know if she's his girlfriend or not this um FKA Twigs who's a really cool artist and um I happen to post about it on my Facebook page just being like oh cool I just saw these people in London in East London right outside my flat that's cool I don't I've never watched Twilight like I'm not that big of a fan but I just you know I post about other yeah. celebrities I've seen near my flat like I saw Russell Brand near my flat last year and stuff so I was like okay cool didn't think much about it that was linked to my Twitter and okay. I got Super so fans? many terrible messages from people people saying be scared people being really harsh and awful to me and I just I really don't like that side no, of the internet it's... where you know they're accusing me of lying and accusing me of all sorts of things and sending me personal messages that were very really? malicious Jeez. and I just never experienced that yeah I think I was dubbed the London troll <laughs> in the Twitter community sorry I'm not <laughs> I laughing I, be, uh, I don't know if I should be proud of that or not hashtag but, London um, troll yeah that's great <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but so to me, that was one of the first times where I saw just how scary yeah, can the internet can be. And I've, I've had that experience too. And some of my articles have been shared on Reddit. Okay. I didn't share them, but other people have shared them. It can be a vicious, scary place. <laughs> I've never got involved with Reddit. I must admit. It's, um, I, as I said, I didn't post them. Yeah. But one of my articles that was very, uh, it was a really tongue in cheek article and it got posted and people obviously didn't read it in a tongue in cheek way. And said it's a PG show, so I can't say what they said. <laughs> but they said some terrible things. So that was a. Thankfully, it really hasn't happened that often. But that's why on social media, I try and kind of just yeah, take a neutral step back. and yeah. I guess that's you know a risk you take by sort of putting yourself out there on the internet as a writer. I guess like obviously with travel, unless you completely like destroy a place in sort of negative comments most people yeah. are sort of there to read about fun times you've had or nice things yeah. you've done so maybe yeah. we're not so much in the firing line as other writers but yeah, like you say it's sometimes you have to watch what you write I guess and mm. maybe I'm, I'm terrible like I hate reading drafts over and over to make things make sure things are okay but I guess in an ideal world we'd all have editors or someone to look after over look over our shoulder and yeah yeah, yeah definitely but it can work in a good way too, as with Limerick in your case. Yeah. So there you go. Right. <laughs> and well away, sorry, I'm taking up half your Sunday. Um, and when you do like a part now, it's like silly quick fire questions, but they're quite okay. fun. So we'll just crack on with those. Um, right. And I'm just going to make them up on the spot. So, um, um, right. Writing on a laptop or in a diary, what would you go for? Laptop. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. I can write a lot faster. <laughs> it's got a spell check. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, plane, train, or automobile, or whatever is your favorite type of travel, favorite method of travel. Sorry, well, it depends on where I am because okay. I, I I do love a road trip. Yeah. So if cool. I could do if I could do a road trip, but um, I also just love sitting on a train. Trains are really popular. By. Yeah, trains are awesome. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. Um, so you're on a plane. Are you sitting aisle, window, or in the center? Definitely not in the center. Nice. Who, who willingly chooses? I know. I know. <laughs> um, I've got to give you the option, but yeah, it's. <laughs> um, I would choose the window. I choose oh, the window. Like a, yeah. I would yeah. My only fear is that I'm going to have to, that the person is going to be sleeping and then I have to go to the bathroom. But um, I jump over them. I deal with that. I'm like, well, that's quite nimble. Yeah. There. You just sort of use yeah. the armrest as stepping yeah. stones. No? Oh, okay. that's good. See, I always go through the horrible <laughs> Can you... center back yeah. situation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I usually choose the back. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, no, I choose the window to look out the window. It's, and if it's in the day, yeah, definitely to be able to look out the window. If it's at night, yeah, definitely so I can try and sleep. Although, yeah. I won't sleep. That's my curse. I will never sleep on a plane. No? How come? Oh, Is it uncomfortable? Yes. Or? Yeah, mm. yeah, uncomfortable. I just can't sleep. I, it, I wish. Uh, actually, as I've gotten older, I notice I can fall asleep more easily. As I've grown a, to like red wine, I find I'm much more able to go to sleep. Exactly. Yeah. I tried two, two little bottles of red wine and, um, yeah. yeah, I said little bottles. Little yeah, bottles. noted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, what is on your current music travel playlist? Any particular song that you're loving? Um, I find when I travel... I always listen to the music that I grew up with. Okay. 
I don't know. I actually, no, I do know. I figured it out. I have a theory that it's my kind of homesickness or it's my way of grounding myself sort of okay. um, that when I'm, I'm doing these trips, I love to listen to the music that I listened to when I was younger. So, or just music that feels familiar. So I always end up going back to Radiohead when I travel. I find that it, um, okay. I just listen to it a lot or I'll listen to stuff that, you know, I used to listen to on road trips with my parents and stuff. Oh, um, cool. But yeah, I don't know. I, to be honest, if I'm on a plane, I definitely would listen to music. But if I'm on a train or even on a bus or something, I, I often don't listen to music. I'm listening to music less now, I find. Like when I was like 20, I was all about, you know, headphones in, favourite song on. But now I like to listen to what's going on around. Maybe that's exactly. like a, a yeah. maturity thing that happens. I don't know. But, um, yeah, no, I never, like when I travelled around, when I backpacked around Europe and when I backpacked around Southeast Asia, actually, I didn't even have a means to listen hmm. to music. Okay. Because I just thought, I'm going to, oh, no, 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 in Southeast Asia I did. But, um, yeah, around Europe, I was just like, okay, I'm going to listen to what's around me. And I still usually choose to do that. Even, to be honest, even when I'm in London, like on the tube or on the bus, yeah. often I, I like to just, I don't know, take it all in. You're the only one, probably, in London. <laughs> Everyone else is plugged in <laughs> completely. I know, I know. Uh -oh. And everyone's plugged in and looking down. Yeah. I'm like, what? Why don't we talk to each other? Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> it's not no. going to happen, is it? No, not at all. All right, um, <laughs> next one. Uh, chosen superpower. What would you have? To be able to sleep on planes. That's not really a superpower. <laughs> like, um. <laughs> that's not going to defeat evil masterminds, is it? No. You are, think... You're not having a Marvel film made about that. <laughs> <laughs> like... The sleep master. I don't know. Um, what, what would I... I mean, I guess teleportation because flying flying would be cool as well i wouldn't want to be invisible or be able to no. know what people are thinking or anything like that but i guess to be able to tell yeah if i could say like oh it's raining right now it looks really gross like i want to be in the bahamas okay that'd be kind of cool because if, if i chose flying that would take a long time to fly there i'd choose to fly but like really fast okay that would be so my like Superman, like yeah, the, the world. <laughs> so you, you get the you get the the sensation and views of flying, but you oh. can be. Oh, that's a good one. Mm. I reckon. Okay, last. I still think like flying, you know, the windblown hair might not be a good look. Whenever <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Hair tie? No. Okay. Um, maybe. Right. Last one. Um, this is quite a good one. I hate those ones. Uh, Brenna Holman's guilty pleasure. Oh God. Everything. I'm the <laughs> I have so many vices. <laughs> I'm terrible. I have no, like, no, what's the word I'm looking for? That thing that tells you to stop doing something. Just control in general, yeah. Control, yeah. I'm not, like, I'm not an addict or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put this the wrong way, but I, I definitely love a good drink. Like, I love okay. Guinness, red wine, whiskey. Um, I love chocolate. But I would say my biggest guilty pleasure is probably sleep. I sleep in. It's quite healthy though. And I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of. <I> definitely, <laughs> yeah. Well, anything in excess is yeah. maybe not. Okay. Enough, but I would say that I love, um, yeah, I love sleep. Oh no, my biggest guilty pleasure, is Sporkle. What's Sporkle that? Sporkle quizzes. Sporkle dot com <laughs> is this. a quiz. Is a quiz site. Actually, some of the the other guys, uh, Sai and I forget who else, told me about this site and um i started going to it and it's um just trivia quizzes but i'm obsessed with the geography quizzes right okay. so um i promised myself last year i'd learn how to label a blank map of the world all the countries oh, cool. so through this site okay. i was able to do it um so now i'm on to capitals of the world so that's my biggest guilty pleasure like i mean before i go to sleep like some people have a glass of warm milk i'm tired <laughs> <laughs> Still looking at the screen, yeah. <laughs> oh. Really cool. Yeah. All right. But um, yeah, I love I love online quizzes. So yeah, I told you I have a lot of guilty pleasures. So. Yeah, don't sound that bad to me, Blimey. We've had worse answers so far. Okay. Don't worry, much right. much like, worse. I don't smoke. I don't. No, you know, no. Do anything illegal. So, but if it's legal, I I probably like to do it. <laughs> Fair a lot. Right. Cool. Yeah. Um. Done half an hour already. I should probably let you go and enjoy your weekend, really, shouldn't I? Um, I told you it's gonna be wordy and long, just yeah, like my grand. blog. <laughs> it's grand. No, 
more, more detail the better. Um, what I will say, obviously, I'll post, like, if you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be, like, links to Brenner's site and social media and the, the Limerick post we were talking about below. Um, there might also be some other, my right, your left, other, like, travel blogger interviews if you're on um, YouTube at the moment. Um, and, yeah, thank you, basically, for giving up part of your Sunday for having a chat. No it was good fun. Um, thank you very much. Anyone that's leaving any feedback? Bit. Yeah. Um... Next one coming soon, don't know when, but I have got three or four more of these lined up, so hopefully we'll get a few more views and things from other travel bloggers. But yeah, thanks, Brenna. Okay. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>